Hey. How Man, are you've you? got like a 4K camera over there. <laughs> I do. I this is my Twitch setup. So oh I, wow. Yeah. That looks incredible. <laughs> well, hi, I'm Izzy for Alt AZ. I'm talking with the amazing Mike Shinoda, who I grew up listening to, mind you. So this is really cool. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you, Izzy. Yeah. So you're releasing a new single that you wrote with an Arizona local, actually, Kaylee Morg. Uh, it's called In My Head, and this is going to be in Scream 6. So this That's is right. huge. So first of all, let's start with how this all happened. So were you like writing a song and you thought it would be cool for the movie or did they hit you up to write one? How does that work? I mean, it's a, it's like, I've been very, I've been kind of all over the place in the past few years, like doing, I, I told, I, it's like research and development in a sense where I was experimenting with a lot of different things. As I mentioned, like streaming on Twitch a little bit, writing yeah. things like I was, I was, I had produced some songs for fans, like they had sent in demos and then I was like also writing and producing with some other folks, um, like for example, Swaco. I have a song out with him called POS, got a song out with Justice Bennett's called Everything Is Nothing. Um, had been doing more, um, you know, I'd been staying off the microphone. Like I'd been doing writing and production for other people, but not like doing vocals. And I met Kaylee during that time, by the way. Oh, get out. So fast forward to like towards the end of last year, um, the team, the production team behind Scream 6 came to me and said, hey, what do you think of Demi Lovato? And I was like, that's a weird question. Like, why do you ask? <laughs> and they said, well, we're thinking of having her sing, a stu do a song for the new movie. And we, we think we'd love to have you produce it. And I said, well, that's really a funny coincidence because I actually have a meeting coming up with her. I've already, we've already gotten in touch and we don't know each other, but we're going to talk soon oh, get let out. me do that and let me figure it out so i go and i talk to demi and i played her some things and she's pumped like she's really excited i was really excited felt like a good fit and she selected she's like this one song is like the one i really like i said great and then i went to the team uh that was putting in you know, the production team from scream and i told them how that went and i played them a number of demos just to get their vibe. And they were like, okay, we love the same one that Demi loves, but we also love this other song. What is that? And I was like, well, I think this is a solo song. Like, I think that's me. And I had already started to develop it as a song for my own vocal. And they were like, great. Is there any chance we could get both songs in the movie? Ooh. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I love Scream and this is a huge like opportunity, super fun too. And I, I, I ended up putting the pieces together with Kaylee because she's also a huge fan of the Scream franchise and a huge yeah. horror, horror movie fan in general. So yeah, so I have two songs in the new Scream movie. One is called Still Alive by Demi Lovato yeah. and that's just her vocal. And then the other one is me and Kaylee. Uh, it's a song called In My Head and In My Head comes out this week. And yes, I'm, I'm so just excited. so, I mean, it's been a while since I put out a new song. So really excited about this. And I feel, um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel really good about it. Well, it sounds like it was a really long process. <laughs> to get it was just like done. surprising. Like things just <laughs> fell into place. Yeah, that's awesome. And I've only heard 30 seconds of the song, but I'm telling you right now, it's going to, it's one of those songs that's just going to get stuck in your head all the time, but you're not <laughs> mad about it, you know, like. So thank you. I really Kaylee's great. Kaylee's great. I'm stoked on it. It's like yeah. we're yeah. It's like funny because we were talking about the um, like as you know, like we've been also supporting like the 20th anniversary of the Lincoln Park yep. uh, M Meteora album, and to be able to put out like an old song and a new song in the same roughly the same month is like such a weird it's such a cool juxtaposition because you can hear how at the like back then like things were in a certain like format almost like a certain box for the band yeah. and now i feel like when i listen to like in my head there's like almost no genre to it it's like completely devoid of preconceptions about how things like it, you know do you know what i'm saying it's oh, absolutely. a weird it could fit in so many different formats yeah. and it's that's not, one thing it's I like not a it. standard anything genre yeah. kind of song it's just yeah. its own it's just a song yeah yeah i'm really excited do you think you and kaylee will work on other things together in the future well i mean we'll see i think she's great like i you know 
I'm open right now. The things that I've been focusing on are all a lot of the stuff is like, you know, still writing and producing for other people once in a while and doing my own stuff. So yeah, yeah, we'll see how that, how that goes. Awesome. And I know you mentioned that you love Scream 6 and horror movies in general. What would you say is the most disappointing horror film you've ever seen? Disappointing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, horror. Oh, God. Well, it's a weird answer because one of my favorite, like the first R-rated movie I ever saw was Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Oh, God. And Terrifying. I saw Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and Aliens in the same weekend with my cousin. My cousin was like, she was a huge like uh, horror fan, and but also wanted to show me Aliens because she's like, if you're going to see a good R- R-rated movie, check this out. <laughs> Let me traumatize um, you. <laughs> they're great. I love them. Yeah, I had nightmares for weeks. Um, and then I think like at some point, like down the line, there was probably like a Nightmare on Elm Street that was like, I want to say it was like, I don't know, is there, is there a five, like somewhere in that range, four or five, something like that, where I was just like, what the hell is this? You know, Yeah. I definitely, by the time they were in that, that like Jason and Freddie were doing movies together and (laughs) there was stuff in space. Like I didn't watch, I didn't watch those movies. I didn't watch those movies. (laughs) Yeah. That's a fair, that's a fair answer. I'll give you that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but I will say that, like, still to this day, Nightmare on Elm Street one, total classic. Yeah, uh, I'd say I always when people ask, "Do you what's your favorite one a scary movie?" I, the Shining is my like number one, number one. Yeah. Um, also love That's Poltergeist, fair. by the way. Poltergeist, great. I just remember the tree scene really freaked me out, and I had nightmares for a long Poltergeist? time. Poltergeist. Yeah, doesn't the tree huh. like come in through the window or whatever? Yeah. I loved the, um, well, I mean, that classic TV scene, though. God, yeah. like, what a, <laughs> there was nothing like that. I was scared of televisions for, like, weeks. <laughs> yeah, and then the ring came out, and you're like, great, now another reason to hate TVs, yeah. <laughs> That's on my, I realized recently that the ring is, like, in my, maybe in my top 10. I love oh, the wow. ring. Oh, wow. Love the you ring. You never hear that. You never no. hear that. Well, partially because people <laughs> want to be snobs about it and they're like, oh, the Japanese. Exactly. That's the one. It's based on the Japanese movie. But still, like, I saw The Ring. I don't know if I've even seen the Japanese version. Like, I maybe if I did, then I it would it would rank up there. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, I just <laughs> love, I, I will go see a good scary movie by myself. Yeah. I'll just, like, go out and watch one. I think it's- You're brave. It's a, yeah, I love it. Is there any other like movie or video game or something that you would want to write a song for or a soundtrack? Oh God. Um God, what do I what am I really into? Um well, what have I been watching? I've been watching these are not a fit for anything. Like I I don't know <laughs> how my music would I mean it's like almost like saying, well, I love like I love like uh you know Lord of the Rings but like my music isn't going to fit in a Lord of the Rings movie. If they haven't used yeah. if they didn't use Led Zeppelin they're certainly not going to use my stuff for Linkin Park. Um do you know what I mean? Yes. Do you know what that joke what <laughs> of I mean? Of course okay. I do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, in case somebody's listening they don't know what that joke means. It, it's because Led Zeppelin in like the 70s like wrote like a, a Hobbit song album song. Ha, there's yeah. like a yeah, there's like a Hobbit song on one yes. of their albums, and everybody laughs about how weird it is that a that a classic rock song has like references to like like yeah. Gollum and like well stuff like that. Um, it's a whole other league of its own. God, I that got really nerdy. Um, <laughs> I'm watching Shrinking. I'm watching. I loved Severance. Okay. I loved Arcane. I love uh, anime. I love. You could totally do anime. Anime would work. Yeah, anime I think you could work. do that. Absolutely. I love anime. Yeah. Is there anybody you would want to collaborate with that you haven't yet? Musicians? Or, you know, people for clothing lines or merchandise or whatever. I saw you did that Nog Champa incense, <laughs> which, by the Hell way, yeah. is the coolest I have thing a, I've ever so seen. So I, I was doing, I was streaming on Twitch. I don't do it very much. But when I, when I have streamed on Twitch in this space, um, in my studio, I've got, I burn incense often. Yeah. Um, the fans like gave the incense burner a name. The bull <laughs> is called David. <laughs> so it became a thing. Like that's the thing about live streaming is if you show up and you live stream yeah. regularly and interact with the community, 
then inevitably it immediately goes to inside jokes. Yes. Like you do it for three days and you've already got like 25 inside jokes that anybody <laughs> tuning in is like, I don't, I'm not keeping up. Like, what are they talking about right now? And everybody else has to be like, oh, like his, his incense burner is called David and the chair is called Henry yeah. and he's always eating trail mix. And, he, you know, they just list <laughs> off all of these things that basically they've created. Like I didn't even create any of these things. Well, the I ate, I do eat too much trail mix, but <laughs> all of the rest of it, the fans are just making that stuff up. And then it yeah. becomes their inside joke. And I'm just a innocent bystander. Which is funny because you wouldn't think that somebody, you know, in your position, people would be able to access you that easily and have like inside jokes. I don't, <laughs> Twitch allows I mean, that. it's, it's different, but I don't mind it. Like it's fun. I, what I've always, you know, apart from the connection, like I make music primarily there's a, I'm, I have an internal need to make creative things. That's the primary driver. And then beyond that, I think that the thing that happens next is that there's a personal connection via that art to yeah. human beings. And so the community connection is the next most logical, important piece. Absolutely. So whatever it is, if it's TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, or if it's Discord and Twitch, I, I'm on all of these things. Like they, that's the i'm with everybody in all of those places all the time <laughs> not all the time i'm 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 pretty if they fo if you follow me on those things like you'll find out that i i don't i don't post a ton i don't i don't even post like regularly yeah but i do i'm i am there like i'll even just be i might even just be lurking i'm more of a lurker okay. too yeah yeah i get yeah. that yeah so let's talk about Lincoln Park Meteora really quick. So the 20th anniversary, I mean, congratulations. That's so huge. It's it's scary for me to realize it's already been 20 years um, because I grew up with it. But, you know, we've been spinning your song Lost for a little bit now. Absolutely incredible. What was it like when you found it and listened to it for the first time in a really long time? Like, what did that bring up for you? Yeah, it was like really, uh, it was such an awesome discovery and such a great feeling i knew I, I as soon as i saw it i remembered it like the the second it started playing i was like i yeah. know this song oh my god where has the song been <laughs> and it you know going through all of the material to create the 20th anniversary package like it's basically the 20th anniversary of Meteora is a um it's 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 five vinyl records and four CDs and three DVDs and a book and stickers and stencils and photos and all of this it's incredible it's like totally comprehensive it's like everything worth seeing and hearing that we have from the time yeah so there's an album the two highlights to me are there's a there's a there's an album of unreleased songs um, some of which, including Lost, are like vocals all the way down. Like they're done. They're mix master done songs. Wow. And then um, there's also unfinished stuff. And there's also um, a, a 70 something minute documentary of like never before seen footage. So some wow. of the some of it is brand new footage you've never seen. And some of it is stuff that's existed in like a little chunk online somewhere but you get the full like it, you you saw 10 seconds but there's on the you know in this clip there or in this this i don't know movie or whatever you want to call it it's there's like five minutes of it or something or like three minutes of it so um both of those are like the total like highlights of the package i'm so excited for people to to check them out yeah and it comes out april 7th right yeah april 7th is the meteor 20 package man that's so nuts yeah i i honestly can't wait to get my hands on it. i think it's going to be um i think it's just really emotional for people who you know were able to grow up with that album and i remember meteora specifically was one of those albums where it it kind of like solidified my teenagehood i actually saw a guy on a beach when i was in high school wearing a meteora shirt and i asked him to be my boyfriend um he said no but i was like hey we like the same music so that would be <laughs> thought that was a good in but uh i guess not <laughs> you gotta shoot your shot I know. You gotta right, shoot well, your shot. I think it's I like, uh, 
you had every reason to to do that. <laughs> I know. Oh, God. Yeah. Look at me, man. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Mike. Mike Shinoda, Lincoln Park, solo collaborator. I mean, the dude's done absolutely everything. So excited for In My Head to finally come out on Friday. And of course, the Meteora 20th anniversary, April 7th. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.